Are you streaming us? No streaming. No, I thought you were recording to StreamYard. Oh, yeah, I'm recording to StreamYard. Okay. It's already recording, yeah. Um, no live streaming, though, yeah, yeah, just yeah. in case we have to bail. So, um, You're doing the – oh, I'm doing the greet? Didn't yep. I do the greet last time? Yeah. You're supposed to be doing it. The greet and then the setup? I figured you wouldn't want to set up the episode. Okay, I'll do the greet. Do you want to do the music or not? No, we don't have – that was just more for guests. Okay. Than it. Yeah, crack that now. I was doing a little, I was creating the clip for Headliner, and Terry seemed really hot. Like, she was hitting really high, and it didn't sound like that when I was editing. Huh. And I played it back on Buzzsprout, and it didn't sound like that. So I don't know if Headliner does something to it, but she was really hitting the top level of the mic. You're like, ah. Mm. All right. Hi, guys. Welcome to Threads Podcast, Life Unfiltered. This is a show where we talk about faith, mental health, and uncomfortable conversations, not necessarily in that order. It just rolls off the tongue that way, and even though I hate that faith comes first. But thank you for joining us t- uh, whenever you're listening to this show. It could be during a third shift work job <laughs> or while you're running. I don't know why you'd want to listen to us while you're running, but we really appreciate you listening to Threads Podcast, Life Unfiltered. Think of how peaceful it would be if you listened to our sexy voices while running. <laughs> like you'd be like, "Oh man, I am chill. I am. I'm in zone two of heart rate. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do." So, as Jason said, this is episode 168. I can't believe that you have had that many podcasts. It's a lot of episodes. That's a lot of talking. Like you should go back and count now. Uh, so tonight, or tomorrow, or any time you listen to it, as Jason likes to always say. We are going to cover a couple things. We um, There's probably some new people listening, and we want to um, talk about why this show exists and then some things we are learning because we think both are important, and I think we will get into all three of those quote-unquote buckets, faith, uncomfortable conversations, and mental health. See, doesn't it roll off like saying it that yeah. way? But, I mean, we – we do focus on faith, and it is important, but it's not, like, our main thing. And I, 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 it sounds weird. It sounds almost anti-Christian for me to say, that's not what we mainly talk about. Like, don't think this is a Christian podcast. Like, I don't want to say that because that sounds bad, too. But. but it also makes me happy. Like, it's not, like, my um, job all the time to only talk about faith. So I oh. do appreciate that's a part of it, but not all of it. Right. All right. So... As you know, as Mike has transitioned into full-time host, which I'm super excited about, uh, we do trivia or whatever just to kind of loosen things up. And I love trivia. I was telling Mike before we started recording it, I actually really look forward to doing something before we kind of get into some deep shit. So, um, yeah, so tonight (laughs) we're going to do – Gross, would you rather? Because Mike was doing these softy, would you rather? I know you got so mad at me. I didn't get mad, but I was like, all right, these are dumb. Not dumb, but they're just like, they're just, you know, they're like super lighthearted. This Let's... is first grade, would you rather? I, yeah. I actually don't think he said that, but no, I didn't. I so, really just wanted to do a voice. <laughs> so hopefully, when uh, Mike did gross ones, they're not too terrible. But uh, all right, let's do this. I will we'll alternate asking. Okay. I mean, we'll still respond to each other. But would you rather take a shower but wear dirty clothes or not take a shower but wear clean clothes? I would rather take a shower and wear dirty clothes because I hate, like, the feeling of not showering. But wouldn't you instantly, when you put those dirty clothes back on within, like, 30 minutes, start feeling that? Yeah, but I'd have 30 minutes of glorious of not feeling like I stung. Maybe the smell would come from me. But not that I would stink. I think I'm going to go with you, too. I'd rather take a shower and wear dirty clothes because yeah. I kind of. OK, so this might be TMI. All right, here we go. Yeah, let's go. So everybody's laundry habit is different. I wear literally the same pair of jeans all week, one pair every day, and I wash them the weekend. Same with my little sweatpants. Little. I don't know why I added <laughs> the word little. I don't know why. But same with my sweatpants. I wear them all week unless I, you know, really spill something on them. Is yep. that gross? If, it, I would say no because I just bought my second pair pair of jeans that I actually wear on Friday. So now I have two pairs for the week. So, no, I feel Excellent. like that's normal. Okay. Is it normal to have a giant hole in your crotch in your jeans and still wear them? Because currently that's what's going on in my no, jeans. No, that's You can't wrong. see it. Still. But I did buy a second pair. Because otherwise, Dr. Jason – Poor, poor Dr. Jason. Oh, yeah. Did I tell you that I had? Yeah, I had a 
it's gotten bigger since then. No. Yeah, he's stretching my legs and seeing whatever uh, <laughs> me undie pair I have on. Oh wow! All right, moving on. Would you rather go without shampoo for the rest of your life or no toothpaste for the rest of your life? I think I'm going no toothpaste. Okay. It, I'm okay. More TMI. Yes, explain this. I struggle with brushing my teeth. Like, I brush it once a day, but I need to do it twice a day. Once a day? Once a day. And sometimes I forget. And, like, if I run out early in the morning, I know. It's terrible. And I have terrible teeth. Do do you floss that one time you brush it a day? I actually floss and rinse. I have a routine when I do it. But my dentist is like, you should do it at night. I'm like, no. If I could do it at night, I'd brush twice. The reason is I usually have a snack. And I don't want to brush away the taste in my mouth. It doesn't. Yeah. It, isn't that weird? You ruin your snack taste. Yeah. Because like you eat a snack at let's say nine o'clock and you go to bed at nine forty, you still have that delicious taste in your mouth. And you don't want to lose that. Exactly. Otherwise, you need to eat again, and then you yeah, should I just brush your teeth? I okay. know. I'm probably gonna get slammed for that. You know, one. I don't know. Uh, I think without shampoo because I can use other stuff. No, I don't know. Either way, you're gonna have itchy. Yeah. Itchy either way, stuff. you're gonna be the gross person that no one's gonna want to <laughs> be around. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, would you rather be super itchy all over forever or be really sticky all over forever? I, I am going to pick sticky because I, I have had chronic hives and they, they aren't flared up now, but sometimes they're flared up. It's and, miserable. And that's miserable. Like sometimes my palms will itch because I'll have hives in there. I would rather be sticky, even though it's weird and gross, but ugh, I'd still rather, rather than be itchy. Yeah, you? I agree. When I actually got hives from the first, the second COVID shot and they were bad oh yeah i, I needed that. steroids and that wasn't fun so i i agree with you i did not know that was from the covid shot i can only assume it, oh. it, the, i mean i've never gotten hives that i mean i've gotten hives before but benadryl knocks it down but this was like this ain't touching it yeah that was bad you're showing me pictures of that yeah. that was bad Ooh, this one would you rather have your tongue pulled out or have one eye plucked out i'm going i i am too because you can live, you can drive with one eye. Yep. I mean, you can drive with no tongue too. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I'm just looking at like not being able to taste. Yes, that is the best thing in the world. How about is... talking though? You wouldn't be able to talk. Oh yeah, you wouldn't. Like you wouldn't be able to podcast. I think you'd be able to talk. It would be a very limited, but no, you'd you'd figure it out. How well? How well? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> No, that's how it would be. I'm just not moving my tongue. Mike is not trying to be um, uh, bad to any group of people. That no, is... no, no. I was just trying to talk without moving my tongue. I'm not yeah. trying to. I don't know. That is actually a good question. I might have to YouTube that. But, yeah, I, I would agree with you. I think the one eye, like, it would stink. Um, but, yeah. It... Well, let's think of the pain of getting it out. Uh, like, still, your eye. But your tongue just ripped? No, they Sorry. take it and they would, like, cut it. Still. What's this ripped out mm. or oh, pulled out? Pulled out. We well, ain't pulling my tongue out. You're going to have to cut <laughs> it. That'd be a lot it's of It's not happening. Okay, here's a good question. Would you rather have serial killers as parents or have your child be a serial killer? Serial killer as parents. Yeah. Because they're not going to kill you. Most likely. And to, to, to know that your kid was a serial killer, like, you'd have to move to a remote place of the world. Yeah. You'd never get away from that. And would it – okay, this is generalizing because I don't know any kids that are serial killers. You would think that they might start with their parents. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess that would happen. We're thinking really deeply about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like uh, – I'm thinking like like a domestic violence situation. I mean, I can see that, but oof, that's, yeah. let's move on from that <laughs> one. That was rough. Would you rather drink muddy water or drink soapy water? Muddy. Soapy, I feel like, would cause some good diarrhea. Like, really bad. Good diarrhea? Is like, there a good or bad diarrhea? Like, good is in, like, a lot of diarrhea. Like, juicy diarrhea? Yeah, some good old slippery <laughs> diarrhea there. I'm probably going muddy. Uh, okay, you- here you go. Would you rather use a public toilet when, when you have diarrhea or have someone with diarrhea use your toilet? Oh, I'd public toilet. Yeah. I, I poop in public toilets all the time. I know. It's a little lost on you. Because, it is. Because that's that's what you do for your jobs. Yeah. I mean, if when I'm doing gig work, I try to go home. But there's been times when I've been at Walmart, I'm like, nope, this ain't happening. Yeah. Like, but no, I, mm, no. Yeah, I'd much rather have that because I'd rather have mess up a public toilet than have somebody mess up my toilet like well, that. Well, I mean, if you have diarrhea, let's, I mean, I, I mean. How are you messing it up? Do you not know how to poop? No, I mean, it, it depends how intense it is. 
I mean, I guess you get a little bit of splatter on the bowl, but yeah. you shouldn't be, like, getting it all over the seat and shit. No, but, like, even in the bowl, then th- I wouldn't want to clean that up if it was you, like, That's over true. to my house. That's true. Like, oh. like, 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 just think of me coming to your house. What if one time I come to record and I just have to blow out diarrhea? <laughs> You're not going to like that. Yeah, probably not. Okay. Just turn the fan on. <laughs> uh, would you rather have someone sneeze in your face or blow their nose into your outfit? Into your outfit. Um, sneeze. Ah. Outfit. Ah, but then you have to wear it all day. No, no, it doesn't say you have to wear it all day. Okay. Then then I do blow Especially your nose. Especially during COVID. Yeah. Oh, true. Ugh. Okay. Um, would you rather eat off of a cat plate or oh, you eat, eat off of a dog plate? Uh, I don't really like cats. I mean, I don't hate them, but I mean, I've had cats before, yeah. but I'm going to go dogs because like, okay, you want some more TMI? Th- th- yeah. You're getting to know Jason's <laughs> yeah. bad habits. Let's go. I feed my dogs ice cream off my own spoon and then I put it back in and eat it. <laughs> you know what though? My, my um dog will kiss my face. So oh, yeah. after she licks her butt at some point, I right? mean, like, I don't actually watch the dog lick. His butt, and then yeah, 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 yeah. You know what happened? Oh yeah, yeah. And you just because it's spread out doesn't mean that the germs aren't there. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, here's out. Since you're drinking, I'll do the next one. Would you rather throw up on your date, so your wife, or have your wife throw up on you? Me and my wife, a thousand percent. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Natalie. Nah, because because yeah. here's the thing: if she threw up on me, I'd throw up right on her. You do you have that? Oh yeah. Do you? Even even when they are in the other room throwing up, I still get a little gaggy. Do you? I have to be very careful even listening. I'm like, did yeah. you get a little gaggy when I told you my mother in law was throwing up on the no. way home? Because because now now if you would have recorded that. What if I do this? <laughs> no, because it's not real. I'm not that bad. So okay. <laughs> how about how about you? Oh well, uh, you know you already answered, Doc. Yeah. Uh let's do one more. Uh Okay. Would you rather? This is the last one. Would you rather drink animal blood once a day or drink human blood once a year? Animal blood once a day. Okay. So more TMI. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna sound weird. So you. This is weird and kind of sad. You're gonna be like, oh. <laughs> I obviously was abused as a kid, and so. I don't. I don't know where cutting comes from. Like when kids cut. Yep. I have a slight version of that. Hmm. It sounds super weird. Like I I really love ripping scabs off. Hmm. I pick at my nails a little bit. And one other habit is I really if I get a little anxious or sometimes I don't even know why I'm doing it, I'll chew on the inside of my mouth so hard it bleeds gushes and I enjoy the taste. <laughs> wow. There's so much there. Do you, you want to unpack that? or do we... I don't even know how to unpack that. I know. Like, I, I talked to my therapist about that, and she's like, that's pretty normal. Like, the the taste of the blood and the – I mean, I don't I don't, I don't, don't want to take a knife and cut. I would never do that. Yeah. The thought of a thin cut on my arm makes me cr- – like, gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. But yeah. I when I get cuts and stuff, like, I have sca- – scars all over my hands because i always pick them off oh see i can't do that like i want i don't want the scars i don't care about that i want the I, it, it it's literally when people cut it's, it's feeling the pain it's feeling the pain and it, it it numbs other things so some people might numb with alcohol some people might numb with you know drugs or whatever yeah apparently i numb with a little bit of pain a little bit of your own blood i have a little like it's hard to see but i remember you talking about yeah, that yeah and sometimes i get really into it like oh ugh, yeah <laughs> so i don't know how i to do have be- therapy tomorrow <laughs> there you go you can talk more about this see i think animal blood because something about human blood just crosses like i understand what's your own blood but somebody yeah, else's true. blood that's a good point i feel like you cross a line like Especially if you had to drink it, like you watch them draw it out, and you're yeah. like, "There you go, take Ugh. a shot." Oof. I mean, I think I would get the heebies if I did that with animals, anyways. Yeah. But anyways, Mike, take us the hell out of How this. How am I gonna transition I out of this? Don't know. Good so, luck. So even though we do weird things like this, there's some some new people here, and like there's just a couple things that even you brought up with talking about how the show was changing. The first one I want to clarify for us is why in the world are we doing seasons, Jason? Is it is it is it because you and I are lazy? Is that yeah, why we're doing seasons? Yeah, pretty season? much. I'm tapped. No. Um 
this is something that Ben and I actually did talk about before the big breakup. Um, and I think it was something that we were going to do. So this isn't new f- just because Mike's on the show. Um, I, I just think it's, it's good to not get burned out. Yep. And there have been times during threads where Ben and I were both burned out, but we wanted to be, com- we wanted to be committed to our listeners and we want to be committed to growing the show. And, not that we don't care about that now. We're going to take breaks. But, um, yeah, I think that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. I, I was thinking through this of, like, I even think for content-wise, I think you and I can do better content if it's not week after week after week, if there is that break in there. Because, again, like all things, like I think every creator in the world basically does seasons. Pastors even take weeks off. Yeah. You know, even with TV shows, they're not producing a TV show every single week week and day they're, they're doing it in seasons because for that reason and i don't want to force content and i'm not saying we have in the past yes we have uh we've done stuff that maybe i wasn't super passionate about but i felt like we needed to get an episode out now that being said we're still gonna have episodes up might be a quick hey mike checking in for 10 minutes or jason uh could be just uh one of our favorite episodes in the last quarter or ever just yep. stuff like that so you always have something to listen to but uh, we're going to do January, February, March, and then take April off, and then, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. And I th- so there's the content quality. I think we'll stay good. And I think it's you and I just practicing the, the, the all the stuff we talk about, of taking care of self, right? Yeah. I think it's important for you and I to take care of self to make sure our families are healthy. Um, again, we're not complaining about it, but we're just saying, you know, this does take time away from family. We want to make sure we have seasons where we are pouring into them a little bit more. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I'm I'm actually kind of excited to to have that transition time of just, you know, not not worrying about content so much yeah. and uh putting up a good episode. And again, there still will be work going on. Mike and I will be planning, we'll be thinking about. I mean, we may even record a few episodes, who knows. Yep. I don't I'd probably not, but <laughs> I mean if it's an interview, yeah. yes, but it's hard to bank yeah. what we do. Yeah. But cuz it goes on live. So, no, I, I just wanted to kind of clarify that because in that, that was not the point of you talking about um, the, the transition from Ben to me. But I that's one thing I was like, I just want to talk about just in case people are like, what in the world are they doing? No. So that's a very good idea. Um, so the other thing is we at the end of every show, we say, keep the faith, do, do your work and live life unfiltered. I when I first heard keep the faith. So you and Ben came up with this. And this is before I started. Keep the faith. Like, I think because I work in a church and like. <laughs> There's some over people who are oversaved in life. So I was like, keep the faith. I'm like, ah, but, I, but I've actually grown to like it. What are like, first of all, what in the world do these mean? What, what exactly do you and I mean by keep your, the, the faith, do your work and live life unfiltered? Yeah, for me, for keep the faith, it could be uh, a, a keep the faith in your marriage, keep the faith in whatever you're working on that you're, that you're going to see it through or it's going to get seen through. So it doesn't necessarily have to do with faith. But it is a big part of it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you're a pastor, you're a youth pastor, and um, you're going to, you're finishing school to yep. be a. A full pastor, well, is, is what the listener said. <laughs> I, love I it. literally was going to say big boy, but there's some triggering ar- <laughs> things around that. So I decided not no, to say. No, you're it. good. No, but yeah, so I am that. So it is part of it, right? The the faith in, in Jesus. And um, so as I was thinking, there's, I think, keep the faith is. A lot of times when we're improving ourselves, like the work that we're supposed to do, we do not see see the results right away. Yeah. So even think of running, weight loss, like Ooh, yeah. there's often you're 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 eating right, and yet that dang scale won't oh. move. Or you're running and you're running the way you're supposed to and your times don't improve. Or yeah. you're working on your marriage, right? And you don't see the fruit. So keeping the faith to me is like, yes, I am I I am doing the right thing. So whether that's my faith in Jesus like like I'm doing the things I'm supposed to. And I don't see the fruit. So I'm keeping the faith that doing the right things will pay off at some point. So, okay. th- so that's kind of even my like take on it is like, right, there's times that you're like, I don't see how this is actually helping. So yeah. how about do do your work? Well, you know that I kind of pulled that a little bit from, I don't know if I did. I think Brene Brown says that. Probably. And I, I really love her. I don't listen to her a lot. T- total side note. Her voice kind of bothers me, and as someone that listens to a lot of podcasts and edits podcasts, voices, oh, man, I'm telling you. I've gotten used to it, but I I love her, and and I'm pretty sure she brought – that was part of her things. 
Um, in fact, on my personal website, I have my own website, y'all. You do? Yeah. You You've never told me this. I know. This is what I I'm I'm building it. it it's quote unquote built. But when people ask, like when I go on other podcasts, like, hey, oh. this is me because it's got hey guys, it's got threads, it's got gig, it's about yeah. my family and stuff like that. So you can look it up, Jason. I think it's I think it's JasonTeary dot com. I don't know. But Ooh, anyways, fancy. I have a Brene Brown quote on my site because I really like her. So So do your work. It could even apply to faith. I mean, it's do your work. Whatever your work is, your mental health work, your running work, your weightlifting work, your dieting, just do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And that's what it means to me. What about you? Yeah. Even doing your work, like there's no change that happens without doing work. Yeah. Like I mean, like, like, like change doesn't just happen. I think like I look all around and I see people and, and I was this person, we'll get into that later, who I thought change would just happen to me. Change doesn't happen without no. doing your actual day work. So, no, it doesn't. So I think, like, to me, that's why it's important. Like, we, we keep saying that, and I think we, we keep trying to live that and challenge each other to do our work because, again, we won't get better without actually doing our actual freaking work. Last one, live life unfiltered. What does that mean to you? I mean, this one I love the most, and I feel like through this podcast I have live life unfiltered. And I love this because I am, like – you know, funny enough, I've got actually more filtered in my life through this podcast. Now, let me explain. <laughs> it's because I've become better, a better person. My mental health has got better. So instead of when the guy cuts me off at Walmart and I tell him to F off, I don't do that because I'm like, it's cool. It, it's cool. Whatever, you, you know. And so that's why I feel like I become less unfiltered in the wrong way wait in the right way in the right ways and okay i just confused myself <laughs> <laughs> i think everyone knows what i mean i'm not even gonna try to do it but no i seriously think it it's helped um i used to always say i'm unfiltered when i was in my 20s and I, it was just bad like i didn't i had no um reserve i would just just tell you what it, it didn't matter if it made you cry yeah i would do it and i don't do that anymore yeah well and sometimes if you're just getting pissed are you really unfiltered or are you just pissed true v versus now when you're calmer you can actually say this is how i actually this is how it actually impacts me yeah versus just raging on somebody yeah see, it, I, see i would not say raging is unfiltered it's just yeah is that really being unfiltered or are you just angry yeah you know but i would be unfiltered with like i'd be frustrated and not angry i'd just pop i i would call myself the pop-off guy and oh. i'd pop off in, in appropriate times or mm. just say what i'd so, so actually, yeah, this show has really, you know, helped me do that. How do you live life unfiltered, Michael? How do I? I have grown a lot in saying what needs to be said when I don't want to say it. Yeah. Because, again, like, I think my natural, not almost my natural tendency, my tendency, which I learned to cope with, was to not bring up the controversial stuff. Is that because of your just the way you brought up in the church? Your parents are strict or sheltered? No, and again, I I hate always bl going back and blaming some things, but I think when my dad had such a temper, if I brought things that could make it worse. Yeah, oh. So, so I think I learned to hide that stuff. And if I was frustrated, to hide that more because it made life better for everybody. So again, and again, it's a little things, but I like, I've noticed and I've grown in just saying, no, this is how I feel even to my boss, even to other people, like, no, this is how I really feel, even if this causes some conflict here. Yeah. I'd rather have that conflict than than, it, than just letting it bury. So, again, that's where I am growing and hope to grow more in that. Well, so. and just you saying that, it all falls into our bucket of uncomfortable conversations because yeah. some of those really suck. Yeah. They're like, Ugh. and honestly, though, they su it's more the anticipation of it. For sucking. sure. Usually the conversation is like, that wasn't that bad. Yeah, I sh that's cool. I I should do that more. And sometimes it's horrible, but yeah. mo more more often than not, it's fine. But what I'm finding though is I don't know who who had this analogy, but it helps me. So instead of just dealing with it and, and having one quote unquote battle, I worry about it in my head and have a thousand battles. Oh, and it'd be yeah. so much easier just to have the one, even if it's, even if it's worst case scenario, at least it's one. Although I do recommend having a little conversation in your head before you go into that. Yes. <laughs> but again, it wasn't like, hey, here's what I should say. 
it was here's the thousand reasons or a thousand ways it could go and how am i going to be prepared for this versus yeah. like let's just deal with it right so. um so i think we're gonna get into it a little bit more but like what is the importance of keeping the faith doing your work and living life unfiltered like how has that helped your life in some practical quick ways Ooh, I mean, doing my work, you know, with Megan, I mean, I honestly, like, it's been great. We're doing good. Yeah. You know, and that's, it's hard. It's hard. Uh, it's hard for me. Like, the things I'm working on is being more attentive, tuning in more. It sounds weird to maybe someone that comes natural, but that's hard for me. Yeah. I get in my own head. I, I have, like, things bouncing around in my head. That's why I can't sit still. I'm always trying to do something because yep. not that I, do, I don't want to be alone with my thoughts. I'm fine with that. It's just that's just how I am. So I would say I think doing my work has been the most important out of those three. Yeah. I'd say for me, like, yeah, I think even li hmm, hmm. I think living life unfiltered has been the most beneficial in the past little bit. Right. I've just seen improvements. I think we'll get into those later of what those are. Yeah. So, um, what do you think is the outcome if somebody who listens, who journeys with us, I know you hit that word, keeps the faith, does their work and live, lives life unfiltered. Like if somebody listens, like what, like what is it that they will get out of it? I mean, my hope is, is that they, they are able to apply a do your work to their life. Even if it's something as simple as, you know, m taking care of the water bottle at the end of the day and, and putting it in, in a, spot because your significant other gets frustrated that you leave it in that same spot like it's as simple as that and you yeah. do that work and then it, it has a good outcome yeah. because you're not pissing your significant other yeah. off so um obviously we've had some people reach out for thanking us for making mental health kind of a top of conversation and they seek mental health and so that's cool too so um and just yeah i i I keep going back doing their work. I, I feel like I didn't really think about this when I looked at the rundown, but I've really, I'm just really hitting on doing your work. Yeah. And really, I hope like the reason why, like I love doing this is I hope for myself, I, I, I become a better version of myself or the best version I could be. And I hope others are right. As, yeah. as they're keeping their faith, as they're doing their work, as they're living a life unfiltered, like I want people to find out who, who they're really made to be and like live that fully. Because again, I've seen the change that's made for me and you, um, and, and I hope more people are, yeah. are able to live that way. And we would love to hear from you. Like, <laughs> that is our, like, uh, not kryptonite. That's the bad thing. What is <laughs> what is something, like, superhero, like, that? That's our spinach for Popeye. Like, that's yeah. not superhero, but that's the first thing that I know. Like, when you send messages and say, oh, my gosh, this – this this podcast was impactful or like you've made me finally get the confidence to seek mental help like dude that like i get chills from that stuff so yes i'm not saying don't send it if you haven't had yeah. it happen just to you know make us feel happy but like that is worth more than anything to me yeah and, and even if it's little even if you say yeah. hey, hey like 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 the way i hang out with my son is better or yes. the way i relate to my wife just send us that because again Right. That's 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 our hope of doing it. We're not hoping to get famous. We just want to help people live better. And I mean, we, I wouldn't hate it, but that's not the reason why we're doing no. it. If it no, if it was, we would have quit a long time ago. <laughs> well, you would have. I just I, yeah. I just started full time. But, right. Right. Um, so I think a lot of what we're talking about is growing. And for me, a lot of growing is learning. I am a book nerd, as you know. Um, but I love that you listen to Audible because it makes me feel OK. <laughs> I beat up on myself. I, I'm not dumb. But I struggle with books and writing and putting things together. And Mike's, you know, and, and Ben was really good at it, too. And Mike's great at it, too. I mean, Mike's a pastor. So, I mean, it's like, what the hell? Like, it's a perfect job for him. But um, I'm glad that you listen to Audible because it makes me feel less dumb. I know it sounds <laughs> stupid, but. You know what, though? There is, because I'm in the world of smart people, I do have that, like, saying, like, does this really count? But I've decided it does. Yes. For thousands of years, up until the printing press, that's how knowledge was passed. Yeah, stories. Yeah. Yeah, like you literally sat down and listened yeah. to somebody. So so even a lot of times, I will, I'll, I'll actually listen to the Bible, and I felt guilt of that. Like, I'm a pastor who, who listens to the Bible instead of read it. But then I was like, for the first 1,500 years of the Bible, that's how they heard it. For the most part. I mean, there was written copies, but most people heard it by it being 
said. And I feel like I can, even if it's a fiction book, I feel like I can tune in better because you can hear the voices and they they do different voices and you're like, oh, yeah, Yeah. I can see myself. I mean – and my, someone might say a book nerd might be like, well, that's what your imagination is for. But I'm still using that. I'm still yeah. picturing what this character looks like in my head. Yep. So. And can we be honest? We're all too busy to sit down for two hours and read a book. But we have two hours to while we're running, rocking to listen to a book. I fall asleep when I read. I, I it's, do. It's hard. Like if I, even though I'm drinking a little bit of caffeine right now, if I started reading, even with you in here, I would start dozing in my chair. Let's try this experiment. We'll have a, <laughs> pod- a great podcast. We'll have a podcast of J- Jason reading a book. <laughs> See how long it takes before I doze off. So, Jason, like, like, what, what are some of the things you're learning? Even though, right, like, you like books, but not the same. Like, I'm a huge book nerd. But, like, what are some of the things that you're learning? Um, so, I struggled with this with Mike uh, when he put it together, and, and just about what am I learning through the show? That's part of it. Um, I've I've learned learning how not to be an asshole. We kind of talked about yeah. that. Um, like what what like what exactly does that look like for you? Like what what has that journey looked like not to be an asshole? Um, just to try to reflect uh, a little bit on just like not every you don't know everyone's story. Hmm. So instead of being a dick to them, you're just like, it's OK. Yeah. And, and that's super hard for me Yeah, because it, it jumps into my next one that everyone isn't out to get me. OK. And I always think everyone's out to get me. And so that triggers my assholeness. And then this is like this cyclical yes. thing. So um, I think that's that's part of it to try to just take the time that you don't know what that person is going through. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, through threads and some of the interviews we've had, I'd be like, oh, man, that they've had a rough life. Like, yeah. my child was shitty, but theirs was real bad. You yeah. know what I mean? So you just never know what people are going through. So do you think a lot of that people are out out to get you is from childhood and abuse? and Or, or is it something else in life? I don't know. I mean, I it even happens at work. Like, when I have a customer, like, even question anything that I'm doing – immediately I want to go to the defensive. And yeah, I do have to work on that through therapy. That's something that we, we need to touch on. It's been so hard though. Cause I'm like going to marriage therapy and then my, like tomorrow I'm going by myself. And um, so, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. I, I would assume my therapist would say, which kind of bothers yeah. me by the way, <laughs> like she always gives me an out. She always says, well, it's because of this and of your child. I'm like, I get that. But how can I fix that? Yeah, and she does say that, but it's like, is there anything out there that didn't happen with with my parents? Like, hence the boundaries, y'all. Yeah, hence the boundaries. Yeah, because my parents messed me up. So now, in, even with obvious, were, were your parents those who thought people were were out to get them? Uh, my mom did, but I okay. think there was a mental imbalance there. Okay. I think mine's from nurturing, not nature. Yeah. So, but even just seeing that, though, ah, it's a good point. Right. So well, maybe it is. If you're raised that way and then there's some abuse mixed in and that's a look at it, like shit. Like hundred bucks an hour. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's cheap, bro. Uh no, that's actually a really good point. I never thought about that. Damn. That's look, really good. Look at that. See, I, that's why I love this show. Like I literally have never I'm forty five. My birthday's next month. There was question if I was forty five or forty six. <laughs> We've established I am forty five. Literally, my last last year when I turned we we put forty six on the cake for three or four months. Wait, wait you put forty six when you were just turning forty four? Forty five. Oh, I thought you said you no. So t- next month I'm turning forty six. Okay. So March of two thousand twenty one, Megan put forty six on the cake for three months. I I don't know what it was, but I'm like, oh, when I went to go get my Crohn's uh, appointment, I was like, look at honey, they put my birthday or they said I was forty five, and then I was like doing the math. I'm like, I swear to God. That was June when I figured that out. Oh, man. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so, no, I've never thought about that. That's really impactful or insightful. There you Good go. Good job. And, and, and then when you listen back to edit, you'll be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That might be a, that might be a good headliner clip. Ooh. Um, so, a couple other things. Uh, boundaries are amazing. I talked about that a little bit ago. That I've learned that that's incredible uh, through the show. Uh, even with my co-hosts, even with my business partners, I've had, a, I've created boundaries, but for myself, like I haven't rec- 
created boundaries for them. I've been like, okay, Jason, this is your boundary. You're not allowed to do this in this way or whatever it yeah. is. So, and then the last thing for me, I need Jesus more now than I ever have needed him, but I'm struggling Yeah, and I'm learning that I, what I've learned is that I need him. Yeah. But like the way that you've gotten him before is at a church though, right? I know. But I'm not saying you need to go back to church. No, like, no, like, I do need to. But here's me saying, but the same church? I love my church. Do you? I do. Okay, like I, I'm, I'm really no, wondering. No, no, I'll take that back. I love my pastor. Okay, he's incredible, and and there's nothing wrong with the church. I mean, we go back to the mass, not mass. Like first they were super, you know, it, like on the side of being safe, and now they're just like throwing sh- their hands up in the air. And I get it, I get it. Yep. Like you got to do one or the other. So it, it's it's not just a mass thing. I I don't know. I, yeah. I say this every freaking time, but Megan and I really need to have like a long ass conversation about going back. Yeah. What if you just had coffee with your pastor to start? Just so that you could have time with him and not necessarily have to deal with the whole big mass and unmasked and family and health and all I'm that. I'm super weirded out about that. I kind of look up to him like that would be weird. Pastors love to have coffee. That would be so weird. It's awesome. Like part of your job is just having coffee and hanging. Like, just doing this with coffee, or maybe he's a beer drinker. You could do it with beer. Oh, I I don't know. It'd be weird. I so love him too. Like yeah. he's such a nice guy. But I'm just I I am a little awe of him. It sounds not that he's like yeah like an idol or anything like that. But I I just respect him, and I never even thought about that. So I challenge you. Maybe send an email to him. Be like, hey, you want to get coffee or a beer? That'd be so cool. I know. Maybe on a personal update, I'll ask you about it. Oh shit. You, you're, you're. This new co-host, Mike, is bullshit because he's like making me actually be accountable. He's like writing it in right now, y'all. And I know I made the show notes go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um. So now, now, now you're gonna try to get one for me. I will try. So what about you? What are you learning as as we're? So 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 mine goes to book because I'm um so. The, the the comfort crisis you and i both read it through audible you listened to it twice though right three times oh my lord i know heaven. i just finished on my third time well i am on the epilogue so i feel like i finished the third time yeah yeah um and it just really speaks to me is that comfort i mean his this is my interpretation of what he said is that comfort is killing us um yeah. and comfort was killing me um and so i needed to kill comfort and i still need to kill comfort like even as i like think through this. I'm like, I have so much comfort in my life that is keeping me from great things. I think there's a lot of great things. So um, I think most people have heard this, but if you haven't, like I was last year, uh, roughly at this time, I was 338 pounds and like out of breath going upstairs, ankles hurt in the morning, could barely walk downstairs. And that's just physical. But like I look back on at home, I was not doing enough at home. Like with poor Natalie, like she's a saint. She was doing so much of it on her own. Um, work was a struggle on so many ways. Like some good things were happening, but like I couldn't consistently show up and do a good job all the time because I was just so tired, tired, <laughs> beat up. I don't even know what to say. Like I was just a mess uh, um, because I kept choosing comfort, you know, of. Instead of dealing with feelings, I would eat. Instead of dealing with whatever, I would eat or sit there or watch TV. Um, Has your TV been reduced? um, Yes. And I think even more of it is more phone time reduced. Gotcha. um, Because instead of just sitting around, I'll, you know, go for a run or rock or, you know, or go paint our room and our, like, the the room I want to make into a studio. I'm doing that. But, like, I think the biggest thing that Comfort did is I, I, I was a victim. I had this mentality of a victim. Like, really? Yeah, like, oh, man, this really bad happened. Oh, this this cool thing didn't happen. Um, oh, I, 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 I cannot believe that I'm not changing, but I was seeking comfort over actually doing shit about it. So I do have a challenge for you. Okay. What in your daily life can you eliminate to be more uncomfortable? Hmm. I'm not saying you have to do that. This is yeah. I'm just throwing it out yeah. there. I just was thinking of it when you were talking about it because yeah. Yeah, okay, all right, you lost weight, yep. great. Yep. You, you've tackled that. You're still working on it. Yep. You're working out. That's, you know, that's the same. 
And not that those aren't – those are good things. Yeah, but, th- but there's always more. Well, those are like – I guess – Watching what you eat is a full time job. Like <laughs> that's that's uh, that's. I was just curious if you if there's something that maybe is still blocking your comfortableness that you would be able to at least reduce the amount of whatever that is. I I can't think of anything of my own. I mean, yeah. I I think of sim- simple stuff of like the phone. Put but the, the phone down more. But the phone's huge though. It's huge. I'm gonna pull up my screen time. Oh gosh, I'm gonna do it. I don't want to. Mine can't. I can't apply mine now because I use mine for work. I yeah, know. Mine is. literally will say 12 hours a day because it's taking my time that I spend on you know TikTok, Facebook, and then I use the Walmart app on that too. So uh, I don't know how to get the screen time. It's such a boomer. No, it's not. It's complicated. You have to go like you have to scroll down after you get to your screen and look at the weeks. Or the daily average, because it's only going to give you your today. Oh, there we so. go. Screen time. Yeah. No, daily average. Ready for it? Seven hours and five minutes. Woo! Yeah. I Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing, right? It's yeah. so much easier just to, and not that it's all bad to sometimes of course. blow off steam after work, but. Well, you also, you should look at the, the categories, too, yeah. because if it's Google or email, I mean, not that that's. Or text. But yeah, or Telegram I, or Telegram. Yeah, I, w- I was just thinking what we could do because there's like uncomfortableness, like take cold showers. Yeah. Like, but that's physical. What, yeah. what can you do? Well, that's a mental thing, too. But. See, but, but like, and again, I think maybe it's later on. Like I have I, I think it's affected all areas because I've done physical uncomfortable. OK, that's fair. Um, I would agree with that. So because, okay. again, I think that's a good seg- segue into how it's how it is actually impacting my life. Yeah. Um. So I think at home, right? I'm I I feel like I feel like I'm ki- like I'm kicking ass in so many more ways. Okay. Like I am at home, not a perfect husband, far from that. Talk about it all the time where I mess up, but at home, you know, even just making sure the dishes are washed, um, cleaning up after myself, you know, just simple things, but doing that. Um, and that's different from a year ago. Oh yeah. You just probably you just didn't have you didn't have the space. I, I was just done. I was but by the time I came home, I was done. I was comatose. Um, I think with mental health, I'm way less anxious slash panic. And again, I think as you're as I've been doing stuff, I'm less worried what other people think or something bad is going to happen. Because again, when you're not kicking butt, you're like, man, what if somebody finds out I'm not kicking butt? Yeah. Like, and so I feel there's less anxious. And I I seen and this is where even like I'm more bold than what needs to be said. Like I've had those conversations, whether it's with Natalie or Cam or you or or my boss. Like I've had those conversations, which I think last year I just would have ignored it and acted like it wasn't a big deal. Um, and so to me, like that's where. So I mean, even this trip trip to Israel, like I I would not have done all that it took to go to Israel last year. You wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, well, just physically doing it, but but I would not have kept calling the passport office. Trying to figure out, you would have been a victim. I would have been a victim. Like, oh well, you know, this really cool opportunity came up, but because I didn't have it, poor yeah. me, blah blah blah. Yeah, that's so true. And this time, it's like, you know what? I have this chance, and I'm going to do everything in my power to go. Yeah, I will. I will go. I will call. I will bug people until they <laughs> open the door. I mean, I wasn't a jerk, but I was just like, you know, and and I loved it too. Like, there were a lot of doors I never got frustrated. I was just like, no, like what, like what else can happen? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think all that just meant like I'm growing, but, but again, it started with physical and I, I don't know if that I'm weird like that. No, I think that's pretty normal. But, it, but as soon as I'm like, Hey, I, I, I am can run a half marathon. I'm like, Oh, that conversation's going to suck. But that's true. Like that is such a, like I ran for 13 miles. Like that's pretty incredible. Right. And so you go, well, you know, this conversation is going to suck. Or you know what this this is making me tired to wash these dishes right now, but you know it's not as bad as when I was like getting dizzy on mile twelve. Do you do you think that have you and Natalie talked about like have you done like a a year reflection of like how things are better? Like can you can you honestly say your relationships better? Yep, are we just from getting healthy. Oh yeah, because you just have more mental space now to even with extra. Uh, I cannot say that word. Extracurricular. <laughs> See, th- normally when people talk about that, they talk about sex and marriage. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I was saying like, you know, 
podcasting and running, even though you're doing more quote unquote hobbies, you yeah. still have more time and more headspace for your wife before when you were super overweight. Yeah, and and again, so I I have less like actual time, right? But it's better time. You're ba- yeah, because I'm there. Yeah, because again, like I was there in person, not anywhere else. Right. And yeah, so no, it definitely. I, 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 now I also know I have a ton of room to grow. No, oh, which, which makes it al- hard. You're always gonna have room to grow. I know, which makes it hard though when you say, you know, like yes, I've improved, but I, I, w- I don't, I didn't know you when you were like that, but I can imagine you were pretty in a rough spot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you barely knew me until that fateful day of Telegram. Yeah, February twenty fourth. That's so weird that you know that date. Well, because I went back and I looked up because Telegram, you can search things. So I'm I'm hoping for an anniversary card on the 24th. <laughs> there you go. At least an e anniversary card. There like, you go. That's physical. Oh, can it kind of like pop up and like do spins yeah. and whatever else they do? Yeah. So how how about you? How how is um the learn? How has that changed your life? How is that how's that impacting your life? Um, you know, going back to just this show, I, I'm kind of ref- you know saying th- what the show has impacted. I mean, I feel like I could connect with uh people could connect better with me. Megan brought up a time when we were getting the bathroom remodeled. Normally, I'm like, don't talk to anybody, like, whatever. You know, I don't trust you. And she's like, I was downstairs, and I hear you talking to the drywaller, and you guys are talking like you guys are best friends. And she's like, that's so different. Huh. That's so different. You never would have done that before. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool that she said that. I didn't realize it. I She brought it to my attention. I was just having a good conversation with this guy, trying to connect with him, he, listen to his story. Yeah. So and, would it normally be like you would just kind of stand off and like make sure he wasn't screwing you? Basically. Okay. Make sure and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and really calling it to the to the table if they weren't. Okay. Um so that that's been huge and I think the podcast has helped me to to be more comfortable with people. Yeah. Um so that's been cool. Well because like you you literally have been able to talk to you know 50 plus different people. Yeah. For an hour at a time and hear their story. And it's so much different when you're in the podcast uh, space or time recording because there's nothing else going on. Yeah. Now, when I live stream on the other show, there's some moving parts. And so sometimes the conversation, I slip off. I say, um, a lot in that show <laughs> because and I cut a lot of it out because it's just like, um, OK, where are we going? OK, here's this video, you yeah. know, like that. But. For the most part, it's an incredible forum to have a conversation because even when you're talking, like if I was meeting with my pastor, you'd still have your phone on. Yeah. You'd probably get some notifications. And you'd yeah. be like, like right now, mine's literally not turning yeah. on. Like I don't know what's yeah. going on. Especially with like an Apple Watch or, or even your Yeah, Garmin, I mean, right? literally no right now, the world could be burning to the <laughs> ground and I would have no idea. Jason, I have no idea that no. that is happening. Um, so, what, so even with your drywaller, like – like on a practical level, he probably did a better job. Yes, because you were nice to him and like yeah. treated him as a human versus like I'm watching you. Hundred percent. That's such a good point. Like we connected as humans instead of like you're the contractor. I don't really care who you are. Yeah, Just do your shit and do it right. And if something goes wrong, my guess is he'll be more likely to fix the guy who connected with him. Yes, than somebody who was kind of an asshole. Oh, hundred percent. There's a guy on TikTok. I, I'll have to share it because it's funny. I see him all the time now, but basically p- plays the same role where he's someone that says they're rich. Oh, I've seen that. He's I got love the that glasses. One. And then someone that actually is rich. Yeah. It's really good because it yeah. makes such sense the way some people treat people, especially contractors and people that are working restaurants or retail yep. and stuff like that. There's a guy who actually does sewers. I'll have to send to you, too, unless you've seen him. I've seen him. He's, he's got a, like a buzz cut. Yes. Same thing. Has a, such a different attitude around uh, his employees and yeah. his customers. What are you saying, though? People who treat him well, awesome. He, people Sometimes he's like he's he's fired himself when people are just jerks. He's like, see ya. Yeah. Your sewage is backing up, and you're being an ass to me. Yeah. I'm out. My bosses do that, too. Really? Yeah. I We fired one of my customers. <laughs> I called my boss, and I'm like, it ain't happening anymore. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you know what? She's been a pain in our ass, too. We're going to fire her. Oh. Now, it was a small customer. It was like $200 a year. She yeah. has the tiniest lawn. Now, if it was a $5,000 customer, you might have to grease it a little yeah, bit more. Try. But yeah. um, How else is it impacting you? Uh, I feel comforted as I live my life on filter that other people are doing the same because I am. Yeah. Being 
living unfiltered, but being a proper unfiltered. Like, again, yeah. as I said, in my 20s, I was unfiltered in the wrong way. <laughs> now I'm like, hey, this is wrong. You know, this you – know, here's another random thing. I, I, it happened today, and I don't know if this is unfiltered, but connecting better with people. Some gal lost a load on 28th Street, like a bunch of boxes. Okay. Everyone was driving around her. I just pulled to the side and helped her pick up the mm. boxes. Like, I'm not I'm not looking for a pat on the back. And, and I w- probably would have forgot about it, except it happened today and we're recording tonight. But it's like those kind of things. I never would do that. Yeah. Never. I could never have enough space in my head to get out of my own way. It's like, screw you. Get out of my way. No. I can do more of those things. Yeah. So Because, because you're seeing that somebody – it's not somebody dropped those boxes to to be in your way to slow you down. No. It's she just had a really she shitty had, day. She had a really – she turned, and they fell out, and I it took me 30 seconds, and yep. I was back on my way home. Awesome. And I was even really hungry. Ooh, hangry. I mean, I was going home to eat, and I got home. <laughs> I ate so freaking fast. So that's even a bigger win. Yeah. Um, and then real quick, just doing my uh, work. Doing my work has changed my marriage so much. Mm. Like Megan and I, every Monday still do it. We haven't. Well, we've missed Mondays. We've done it later in the week, but yeah, that's been. Oh, if I could, if I could give any advice to young couples, like pick one night just to kind of connect and yeah. not watch a show, just talk. Yep. For whatever. I'm seeing a change from. I think Natalie and I went out with you guys in what July, and then we just did it in January. I think pre what was supposed to be the Tough Mudder, we went out. Yes. Well, we went out before our half marathon, but that was kind of that a, was that was a cluster. That was a cluster. But so I, I would say I've seen growth even in that time. You mm. know, it's it's only six months, but I've yeah. seen just the way you interact with each other, both of you, has grown a lot. Yeah, and I have to assume it's because you did your work. Yeah, and put in the time, and probably had some really uncomfortable conversations with each other. Yeah, we have, and she's been doing great too. Like it's really hard for her to stand up for quote herself and to speak out and she's been doing that awesome and that's uncomfortable for me yeah but i'm super proud of her so yeah that's awesome so i want to kind of leave it on a little like hopeful like (laughs) how how um do you hope to keep growing or improving as a person i think honestly recording every week except when we're on a break i was just gonna say (laughs) when i saw that i was like wait a second what yeah no really recording has i Seriously, I say go back and listen to the old episodes. Yeah, you're going to hear a different host, but it still was good content. And, um, you know, most most of the time people were being filtered. But, um, yeah, I think recording every week is keeping me growing. And and not that I wouldn't grow if I didn't have this show. Don't get me wrong. I think, you know, I think that is huge for me. Yeah. But. Cause you're challenging me when you put, well, even when Ben, when they would, he would put these together. I'd yeah. be like, Ugh, cause how many times I say to you, like, even this, I'm like, Ugh, I know, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it kind of challenges yeah. you to think about it. And, and I, I appreciate that so much. Well, so I'm going to say like, it's not, it's not that stuff wouldn't happen without the show, but it's, but it's one of the ways that we've chosen to do it. Yeah. Like I said before, we're having a conversation. Our phones are off. Yep. There's nothing else going on. Yeah. Where do you get that in life? Exactly. Other, other other than maybe we would rock, like we would have like because again we don't have our phones out. Yeah, we're busy. But again, like but there's still a distraction. We're exercising, yep. but we're heart rates up, so we may not connect as much yep. as we normally would or think about things. Like when you brought up um, my mom always being defensive of everybody. I never thought that's why I did it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm like I never would have thought of that. Yeah. Uh, and so for me, I think the place hope to keep improving is not to let my stutter hold me back. Like as I'm doing uncomfortable things there's just opportunities that keep popping up and my initial reaction is no because of because, because of that worried i'm like, of that I'm worried about that because even can i say like what i was worried about it with you no yeah you can Sorry. so 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 with 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 a uh, zane you know like being on zane's show i was like nope really yeah because again it's different once you and i hang in here and whatever you might edit some of them out i don't know you know like like i get that but like to go Partly because, like, you know, I, I used to hear him when he was on 97.9 and, like, right, it's that person. And I'm just so – part of me is – I'm like, Mike, that's stupid. So, but what if he – I don't think he would tease you about it, but I, I get it, man. Yeah. It's, he's he's raw. But it's not even just him. It's that opportunity that is not, like, my yeah. normal opportunity. But, again, like, um, the through 
I think our last um last um episode and then um, speaking at camp with the high schoolers, like I have a chance to like speak at a chapel at a college around here. And my first reaction always is like, no, I can't do that. I want to give you a little feedback on that. It's not as bad as you think. I know, but because like, I listen to how you speak and I edited a podcast uh, from our other show and the guest. Yeah. It was kind of it was worse. Yeah. Like he did. It wasn't more of a it was like a it was almost like a false start so many times. That's yeah. what I kind of think of a stutter. And I even do that. So it's not as bad as you think it is. I know. But like it's the thing that from early ele- early elementary was like what the thing that made me odd. The thing that I had to go to speech class. Yeah, I can people see. People mocked me about. So again, I and I know, but like as I'm doing uncomfortable, like I'm like, no, like I'm going to keep putting myself in those situations. Yeah. And you know what? I have things to say that are important, I think. So I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah. So, and if anyone says anything, you're six foot four and you'll smash them in the face. So, I mean, don't you wish you could go back in high school oh, when yeah. they were teasing you? Yeah. You, you would have beat the shit out of yeah. them. You would have. I think I actually got in a fight in, was it fifth grade or sixth grade with somebody? Corey? Corey, I won't say his last oh, name. Oh, I got some bullies too. I know their names. I, I'm i pretty sure I did the dude's lawn. He was a customer of Weed and Feed. Lives out in Allendale. How, how bad did you want to like burn his yard? I was pretty sure it was him because I have never heard anyone else with this name yeah. before. But I was like, nope. was better safe than sorry. No, nope, I didn't. I I never even crossed my mind. Really? I, I you are you are such a pro. I, I am. I love my company. I do everything I can. Other than if you tell me I do a shitty job to make <laughs> sure this company survives. No, just kidding. So, well, this has been one of my favorite episodes with you so far. That makes me feel so good after. Because you were nervous. I was yesterday. so nervous. And I'm like, and I also, I wasn't clear on how these sections tied. Yeah. But it was, it was like I was reading a different language when I was looking go. at it. But no, I, I really, uh, my final thought is I really enjoy this episode. Yeah. I got a lot out of it. It's good, right? Just as we're growing as friends, connecting more. I feel like I say that every time we do something personal, but. What? Connecting more? Yeah. You and I just connect more. It's cool just to get. No. I mean, let's face it. Before. Yeah, we were we were literally Telegram friends. Yeah, I mean we we're internet friends. We had meet met a couple of times, but even all this working out, we've never other than rucking, we've never worked out together. Correct. We've never done a weight workout. We've never done a running workout. We've yeah. not done any of it. So this is this is a growing period for us too. Yeah. So we're falling in love. I would not say that, Mike. I do not. I'm in love, and I don't care. Who don't say that. that. Like you won't even tell me that. Like you love me. I used that's, to tell somebody else I love him all the time. That, but made, that's as close as you'll get from me. Is me, <laughs> me like saying same. a sarcastic voice. You're an ass. I am. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. If you could share this podcast with a friend, that is the cheapest free way to do it. Give us a like. Give us a retweet. Whatever, if it was impactful to you. If you want to support us financially, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash threads podcast. Uh, you can do a monthly subscription, which offers some extra benefits, or just a one-time. Thank you, Joe Pellerito, recently for doing that. I really Joe. appreciate really, really appreciate it. When are you going on his show soon? Yeah, in, in March twelve. March twelve. Okay. So I'm not sure when it will release, but March oh, twelve. Okay. I'm going on. Excellent. And always, guys, keep the faith. Do you work and live life unfiltered? Peace. Man, I thought that was going to go a lot longer, but it didn't. It's fifty-eight minutes. Good. Let's hit the.